So if you have the Sony a7 IV, by now you should probably know that there is a new firmware update available for this camera version 4. And with this update, you get a ton of new features, one of which is what I'm going to show you today. If you have not updated your Sony a7 IV yet to the latest firmware, you can go to this video to check out how to update your camera to the latest version. A few notes to report back after having updated the Sony a7 IV for a few weeks now is that everything seems to be normal except for one thing. So I have one third party battery that I bought in February of 2024. It is the newer brand and this battery worked for about a week. After that, it started to show no sign of battery level. There was no percentage in the battery indicator. And after about five minutes from that point, the camera would just freeze whenever that battery was on. So that third party battery specifically does not work anymore. However, I cannot say that this applies to all third party batteries because I have two third party batteries from a company called Elano and that's the brand of a battery charger I recently reviewed in this video here. And happy to say that these brand of batteries so far still work on my Sony a7 IV. In fact, I'm actually recording this YouTube video using one of those batteries. So it seems like it does not affect all third party batteries, but probably if you have an older Sony third party battery, then probably that might be affected. One of the major things about version four is now that we're able to use the monitor and control app by Sony with the Sony a7 IV. This will essentially turn your phone into a complete wireless video monitoring solution. And it is actually really cool because it gives you a ton, a ton of features that other apps that are paid might not even have. Another cool thing about this too is that this is completely free. So we can download the monitor and control app. I'll link it in the description below for you to quickly check it out. But before we continue, it would be greatly appreciated if you hit that subscribe button. If you haven't subscribed and have watched at least one video from me, that means that you came back and you probably should be subscribed. Greatly appreciate it. So once you are on your app, you can select the different pairing methods. You follow these instructions on your camera. So menu, network, Bluetooth pairing, and you follow the steps below to pair. This entire pairing process is actually very simple. Once you select pairing on your camera, this will automatically connect. And right now I'm here connected to the monitor and control app, and there are a ton of features. One cool thing is that I'm able to rotate this in portrait mode as well as horizontal mode and everything else just switches as well. So this is really cool. So let's first go over what we see on the screen right now. Right now I am in autofocus. I can select this to manual focus and I am able to adjust that focus appropriately. You can also select autofocus assist on and off. Let's turn this back to autofocus. You can choose the focus area like you would on your camera. Face eye autofocus. You can move this autofocus transition speed. So all of these are readily accessible right here. So very, very, very cool. Let's get back the iris or the aperture. You're able to adjust that here. ISO. Change that back to the base of 800. You can also tap this button to hold. And that would just hold the recording right there. I'm able to also tap on the screen to focus on the parts of the screen that I want. And this is what I had set up for my camera. So it just mimics that, which is really handy. I can also toggle the tracking autofocus on and off and also toggle the display if I want this smaller, bigger, or have all the overlays just disappear. You can also lock this so you don't accidentally tap any of the settings and change them by mistake. Now this is the really cool stuff. So this one right here, your false color, you can quickly toggle on and off, really cool. Now this button right here, 
toggles your waveform monitor. This wave moves as I move myself because unlike a histogram, this is a waveform monitor corresponds to the actual framing of what you have on your camera. So if I move here, that moves with me. Now, when you go to tool, this is where you access a ton of other features. So again, this is the waveform. You have the histogram. You can toggle it here to the right and it'll show up at the top right there. False color, again, you're also able to change that pattern. Zebras are right here. So you can set your zebra ranges and your specific zebra values that you wanna monitor. So you can toggle that on and off as well. And if you're using anamorphic lenses, this is huge because now you're able to de-squeeze that anamorphic footage and better compose the shots that you're getting directly on your camera. On the a7 IV, there is no anamorphic de-squeeze. So if you're shooting with an anamorphic lens on this camera, you won't be able to really see what you're framing because everything is going to look weird and just crunched up and squeezed. So, but if you have this, you mount it onto a little cold shoe mount for the camera. Now you're able to de-squeeze that footage and frame your shot freely de-squeezed. So as you can see, I don't have to de-squeeze it because this is normal regular footage. You can turn on the grid lines and rotate. There's one trick as well to access even more settings and features, you can just turn your phone to this mode and now you're able to access a few more features. So let me show you. So now you're able to select your PP picture profile or your look. You're able to select and change your white balance over here. And at the bottom here, there are other settings as well. So these ones are grayed out because I don't have a zoom lens, a power zoom lens. We're able to change our stabilization settings here from standard auto and manual. Next, we have recording format. Right now I'm already recording, but if I start recording, you're able to change your recording format and your bit rates and all of that. And if you tap here, you're able to select other settings such as variable shutter. If you're getting flickering in your camera or in your footage, you're able to tap that and fine tune that shutter speed to get rid of that flickering. You have clear image zoom, D-range optimizer, which is grayed out, multimetering, which is grayed out right now, and application mobile operation, it's application priority. There are some features that the monitor and control app has that is not available for the Sony a7 IV, unfortunately. And one of those features is, let me show you. So one of those features is the extensive color settings. Uh, that is where you're able to apply a LUT to your log footage if you're shooting in log and be able to import your own LUT. Unfortunately, that only works with the Sony FX30, FX3, FX6, and I believe also the A9 Mark III. But for a full list, check out Sony's website on the monitor and control app. Another thing too as well is that Normally there is a focus map feature that you can control through the through this app, but it does not work on the Sony 7 IV. That only works again on the FX6, FX30, and FX3. But this is a really, really handy app that you can use if you have the Sony a7 IV to sort of monitor yourself, control exposure, and adjust focus wirelessly. So let me know in the comments below if you'll be using this or if you already have used this before, what has your experience been? I'd love to hear about that. And before you go, here are a couple of videos you could probably watch next and I'll see you there.